There's a representative landsman from Ohio who said, quote, why are we being asked to ban American officials from trying to stop propaganda from foreign adversaries like Putin? Why are some proposing we leave Syria, which Putin wants? Why is the call to abandon Ukraine continuing to emerge from some members? He goes on to say, remember, and I'm quoting him, remember, Hitler did this. He used Americans to spread his propaganda and it cost millions their lives. Putin is doing the same thing. So to be clear, this congressman from Ohio feels that Americans who dare to say, hey, we need to stop writing blank checks to fund this proxy war against Russia via Ukraine must be silenced. He feels that anyone who says, hey, we need to bring our troops home from Syria are Russian propagandists and must be silenced. This is dangerous because this is coming from people who are in great positions of power to actually act on this nonsense. Now, so far, the Senate has refused to take up this legislation that was passed by Republicans in the House. The court has taken action, banning the federal government from having any contact with social media companies for the purpose of censoring free speech. The Biden administration's response, again, was very bold. They are blatant. They're not even trying to hide it. They said that they're challenging this ruling because they're concerned it will limit their attempts to counter domestic extremism. Who gets to say what domestic extremism is? Well, we can look to them because we know what they say. President Biden declared MAGA Republicans and Trump supporters as the greatest threat to our democracy. Maybe he's referring to, maybe they're referring domestic extremists to the, quote, radical traditional Catholics that the FBI has deemed a threat. Why? Well, in part because they prefer traditional Latin mass. Maybe it's the parents who are going to Board of Education meetings and protesting against the overt sex sexualization of their kids that's happening in our schools or those who stand up and protest the irreversible mutilation of our kids in the name, name of gender-affirming care. These are the people that our government, the Biden administration, sees as domestic extremists. These are the people that they want to silence. The Biden administration also expressed that this court ruling would cause, quote, great harm. They're telling the truth it would cause great harm to their power, to their ability to control us by controlling what information we are allowed to read, what we are exposed to, whose voices we are allowed to hear. What's dangerous about all this is they're directly and indirectly using the national security state and law enforcement, the propaganda media and big tech, all working together in this cabal to silence those who hold views they find objectionable and therefore who threaten their power. They try to intimidate us into silence, into self-censorship by using their smear, attack, and destroy tactics. Hillary Clinton used it against me during the 2020 presidential campaign when she said I'm a traitor, a lie that was repeated over and over and over again. People actually believed this baseless lie. Mitt Romney called me a treasonous liar, which as a soldier is an offense punishable by death. Again, presenting no evidence, but calling me this because I said, hey, there are U.S. funded bio labs in Ukraine that the Department of Defense has reported that in the midst of a war could be compromised and create yet another global pandemic and crisis. We should probably do something about that. That was grounds for being called a treasonous liar. Anyone who stands up and says, hey, we should not be the policemen of the world. We should not be waging regime change wars around the world. Their, their label for us is you're a dictator lover. You're a stooge for whatever dictator is in question. Senator Rand Paul being called a, a Putin puppet because he says we should have some accountability for the money and weapons that we are sending to Ukraine. 
reasonable request in the wake of all of the waste and fraud and abuse that we saw for the last 20 years in Afghanistan and Iraq. We're seeing the same thing happen with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. right now. They're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at him to try to discredit him as a person and call his character into question so that voters don't pay attention to him. They've used these tactics over and over and over again because they work. Most people don't want to go through what we have been through and what we continue to go through. Most people don't want to be called these names. Most people don't want to be on the receiving end of these attacks and therefore resort to self-censorship.